Oftentimes, great men have great big egos. So God's going to choose those that are not mighty. Very powerful passage here. It says, For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and the things which are not to bring to naught the things that are. Verse 29. This is why. Ready for this? That no flesh should glory in his presence. In Judges chapter 3, verse 31, we see this glimpse of Shamgar. And after him was Shamgar, the son of Anath, which slew of the Philistines 600 men with an ox goad. And he also delivered Israel. You know, 600 Philistines is a lot of Philistines. It says he slew 600 Philistines. I'm sure he felt overwhelmed. I think he was razor focused. When you are up against 600 Philistines, friends, you don't have the time to get distracted. Or you're dead. How do you eat an elephant, friends? One bite at a time. How do you kill 600 Philistines, baby? One Philistine at a time. That's how you do it. You got to be frequent in your fight. You cannot lose your focus. You have to be faithfully focused and you have to be frequent in your fight. It's not going to be easy. Killing 600 Philistines was just like, wow, I just, I just walk on the scene and they just they drop over. Poof. Poof. It's not like that. 600 Philistines, that takes a lot of fight, doesn't it? It takes consistency. One after another, after another, after another, after another. Friends, you're going to get some blisters. You're going to have some aches and pains from working hard. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. Only one's going to get the prize. Now, in this environment, everybody gets a trophy. But we know that we know that there's only one winner, even though everybody gets a trophy. You get the participation award. You show up, you get a ribbon. <laughs> I don't want the ribbon. I want that big old nasty trophy. You know how many of those that I have on my mantle? None. I don't have a mantle. Verse 24, so run that ye may obtain. So work hard because you want to win. I'm not running to get second place. In Shamgar's world, second place, he's dead. I guarantee you. Listen, it doesn't say that he quote unquote worked hard. I guarantee he worked hard. Now listen, Shamgar was probably just a farmer. At least it appears this way in scripture. He had an ox goad. I don't know many of you. How many of you have an ox goad? You know? You have to use the weapons you have in your arsenal. Use the weapons that God has given you. You've got to be resourceful. Don't wait to fight until you get some new stuff. You can't wait to grow until, well, the, the economy has to change. Or, or, boy, my situation has to just get better. I don't see Shamgar complaining. I see him out there. He's killing. He's getting it done. And because he used the tool that God gave him, God got the glory. Don't wait for better equipment. Don't wait for a better situation. Because you have to be faithful in the situation you're in. God wants you to be faithful right where you are. With exactly what you have. God blesses faithfulness. You see, friends, if we can do it on our own, then what do we need God for? I think God wants us in that certain situation where we depend on Him. And if we cannot depend on God with an ox goad, you think we're going to depend on God if you have an Uzi? He says, you get out there with that ox goad and you whip him. I mean, David, he used a stone. Samson used the jawbone. I mean, that's even more peculiar than an ox go. I mean, can you imagine just kind of rumbling around, grabs this jawbone, this'll do! Ha <laughs> ha! And he gets crazy and just starts whacking people. I mean, I think an ox go, that's, that's pretty wild. You know? I mean, to me, I just can't even begin to imagine what came upon him. 
I mean, was he sitting there and he's just like, Lord, really, this is all I get, right? I mean, I, I, it's not, an Uzi would, would do this. He uses what he has in his hand to do exactly what God wanted him to do. The three things that we can remember. First of all, start where you are. Don't reposition yourself. Start exactly where you are, number one. Start there. Number two, use what you have. And number three, do what you can do. Right? Do exactly what you can do. We can't do it all, but we can do something, right? Now, the circumstances could have been better for him, I'm sure. And the circumstances can be better for you, I'm sure, but you only have to work with what's in front of you. And if God gives you an ox code, use it. If he gives you an ability, a talent, a gift, use it for his glory. And you'll win.